face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to another episode of Who Was, of course, really better. And this time we're looking upon actually the bulkiest of the water ice combination Pokemon, which of course being Lapras versus Wolverine. Now this typing is actually really, really rare and is not used that very often. Actually it was used last time with Wolverine introducing Generation 3. The only two other mods that does have of course this typing is Cloyster and Dugong. And while of course Yugon and Wolverine might actually be of course considered a bit more like each other, there is a very distinct distinction of course between Lapras versus Wolverine and there's a very very good reason to compare these two because they actually have a lot of things in common as of course a few things that they do not share. They are famous for of course being the bulky water ice typing that does lack recovery and also lack of course skull. So without further ado, let's of course talk about their stats, move pool and overall of course abilities and see in the end of the day who was really better. So first of all, let's of course go over the of course type of combination itself because it's famous for being of course one of the worst in the game actually and it mainly is because water typing in general is such a good typing with of course being able to resist the likes of water ice, fire and steel and of course only have two weaknesses in of course electric and of course grass. What is ice typing doing? Well it's a very very bad defensive typing and um, it doesn't do much for water typing. If anything, it just builds up. Well, of course, resisting the likes of, of course, ice, uh, it doesn't resist anything else. It actually only builds with weaknesses in mind. Hell, it's weak to fire and steel, which means it actually loses, of course, that resistance. So, of course, getting two new ones and, of course, fighting and rock. So, we have two resistances and, of course, one, one really big plethora of common weaknesses. Of course, one of those pieces is stealth rock. So as stated, one of the worst timing combinations in the game, and definitely for bulky Pokemon, this is definitely holding, of course, the stamina of these Pokemon really, really far back. And of course, the reason I talk about their, of course, reduced stamina is because they're naturally really, really, really bulky. They're super fat. Uh, look at Lapras HP, for example, 130, while the Wolverine has 110. While, of course, there's a distinction and difference between them, there's still a lot of HP on both of these Pokemon. Lapras Corps being slightly offensively stronger, while of course Wolverine instead gets defensively stronger. 85 versus 80, and of course 80 versus 90. While of course in his special attack is where Wolverine is slightly stronger, of course 95 versus of course 85, which as stated, not by a lot. And of course the special defense Lapras here stands out a little bit more with 95 or 90. <laughs> and of course in speed here is where Wolverine is a bit more NASCAR, of course 60 versus 65. But as stated, they are very, very similar in stat distribution. While it looks at least that Wolverine could defensively be a bit more stronger, one really has to remember that Lapras does have a lot more HP to work with. But special, of course, offensively, Wolverine could be a bit more scarier. But with a 10 base difference, it's not gonna change a whole lot. But it's worth keeping in mind that they have slight edges in different areas. So, of course, with that said, there are here something that really, really needs to be, of course, talked about. There was their abilities, because in the end of the day, here is where it actually starts happening things. Lapras has hydration, which, of course, is during rain. You get, of course, rid of your status. You get, of course, shell armor, which makes sure that you can't get critter. And water absorb, which, of course, just eats water tap entirely. And, of course, give you 25% of your HP back. Pretty decent abilities definitely are very common or very distinguished, of course, a bulkier water type actually. And isn't necessarily that bad. Now look at Wolverine, of course. It has a few niches when it comes to this ability. Uh, Ice Body, definitely one of those. Of course, during Hail, you get, of course, Recovery, which, of course, this generation, Generation 7, might actually be somewhat usable. And, um, of course, if Oblivious, which is not worth talking about, you can't get confused, which is basically doesn't mean anything anymore. And, of course, Thick Fat would, of course, reduce fire and, of course, ice damage by 30%. But, overall, I would say that Lapras has the stronger abilities. War Absorb and Hydration definitely roosted its advantage. War Absorb primarily, of course, of course, predicting the Skull plays back and forth, or even, of course, Aqua Jet and everything. There are things here that Lapras definitely can work with, but with that said, Wolverine, of course, with Thick Fat in mind, does mean that it doesn't take too much damage from Fire-type hits, which could work to its advantage, but then again, uh, Ice Body is also one of those things that is very, very specific, but both of them aren't actually hurt in Hail, which means that Ice Body might not be as interesting as one might think. It definitely would have been a broadened aspect had that ability done more to it, 
Uh, Shell Armor, also a pretty decent ability if you want to capitalize on that. Since, of course, it does have an HP to take a super effective hit, but not a crit one. But yeah, overall, Lapras, I do believe, is stronger. Water Absorb is such a big deal. It's such an easy ability to use overall. And while Big Pet is the most viable wall rain, Water Absorb does help overall better, in my honest opinion. So with that out of the way, we really need to talk about the only thing that may actually distinguish these Pokemon really, really, really well. And that is their move pool, because as stated here, same typing, pretty much the same stat distribution, and abilities that are different but still aren't exchanging them that much or differentiating them too much to make them, of course, a distinguishable Pokemon. The move pool is where it's going to start to change. And while they do share a few moves, they also have a few niches that may should stand out as, of course, a primary Pokemon and a standalone Pokemon overall. So, first and foremost, their strongest stabs are actually Shed. And when it comes to, of course, physical side, they both get the likes of, of course, Waterfall and Avalanche, which are their strongest um, stab attack on the physical side. Do they, they do not get, of course, the likes of Ice Skill Crash. And, of course, on the special side, they both get, of course, Surf and Ice Beam. And other than that, they have the same kind of set of moves that both can utilize the likes of Curse, for example, which is fairly interesting for both of them mainly because they are primarily, of course, slower. But other than that, they are pretty much where it all ends. It does kind of have the same thing from, of course, previous, of course, uh, generations like the Whirlpool, uh, Iron Tail, and, of course, the Dive, and stuff like that, but aren't as interesting for this dialogue, and definitely doesn't, of course, differentiate them too much just overall. So with that said, we're going to talk about what makes, of course, Wolverine a bit more interesting than Lapras. Now, Wolverine's move pool is a bit of an interesting one because it is shallow, it is really shallow, but they have a few specific moves that definitely makes it stand out. On the supportive side, it's definitely what it stands out the most. Uh, Mail, of course, is that it does learn, of course, Super Fang, it gets Roar, it gets Sham, uh, which, of course, makes this Pokemon really, really tough to kind of KO naturally. It also gets access to a stockpile, which, of course, with Seam of the Mind, does make it able to, of course, recover and make, of course, this Pokemon even, even thicker. So this, of course, Shed Moveable is something that I do do really, really, really well. Uh, should also be said that it also gets a likes of Encore, which is really, really good for it. Definitely catch up off guard, of course, we're trying to set up as it, of course, can go for stock piles itself. Since, of course, Toxic Salt with Wolverine is really, really, really viable to get with, of course, Super Fang, definitely forces a lot of Pokemon down as, of course, stands bulkier throughout the match. When it comes to Offensive Moveable, it doesn't get a whole lot more than, of course, Lapras. It does get Crunch, which is definitely one of the more interesting moves in general. But other than that, they aren't that interesting. It also gets Earthquake. I kind of almost forgot about that. Earthquake definitely helps out to get, of course, Avalanche. This is, of course, the Earthquake and, of course, Ice combination is one of the best combinations in the game. You can never capitalize on that, which is something Lapras cannot do. Which make a wall rain a bit more offensively scary, but still kind of not. It definitely is better defensively. But it can capitalize on its offensive move pool, and these move pools that it does get are relevant enough to make it an offensive threat, even though, of course, as stated, it is shallow. It still, as of course said here, are relevant, super effective hits that does cover each other really well. You don't have to have a broad move pool if you hit the things that matter, and Walrein definitely represents just that. Now, Lapras, on the other hand, has a lot to offer a team. It has a really, really broad move pool. It is a really scary move pool, the more I want to think about it, mainly because it does get a bit of a jack of a box. One thing that does stand out for, of course, Lapras is to get access to the likes of Dragon Dance, which is a great supporting move. It is, of course, really, really, really slow, so it's not solving too much about it. So it's good to know that even though you're a slow Pokemon, that you can learn Eye Shot, which is a really, really good overall move for, of course, Lapras. And, of course, we have Parish Song, which definitely is a supportive good set in general. And definitely more for, of course, the VGC, but even Parasite, of course, like the Whirlpool, is definitely tough to kind of counter. It also is one of the few Pokemons, of course, with a water typing that does learn, of course, Thunderbolt and Psychic. Both being, of course, extremely scary moves to, of course, capitalize on. It also learns Asian Power, Dragon Pulse, Future Sight, and probably the one thing that does matter the most. In Generation 6, it got Freeze Try, which makes, of course, a defensive Pokemon that could possibly tackle it, such as, of course, Audrey War types that does resist a stab. Well, no longer would, of course, Freeze Try in general, it just is able to, of course, hit them super effectively. On the physical side, it also learns, actually, Drill Run, which is, while not the most viable move overall, it's still an interesting move to, of course, get. It also gets, of course, Heal Bell, which makes, of course, a more of a defensive set and, of course, actually capitalize on the support of the team to not get, of course, affected by 
any kind of um, status move or at least recover from it. One thing that also should be mentioned is, of course, since Generation 1 was released with tutor moves, it does get access to the likes of Solar Beam, Reflect, and Psy Wave. Solar Beam primarily here is definitely what I want to talk about. Solar Beam is something that was actually lost. Uh, it couldn't learn Solar Beam for quite some time since Generation 1. It does get that now, and while it doesn't do too much for it, it still is a move that it hasn't been able to utilize at all, and being able to capitalize on that is kind of cool. But that's pretty much where the move will end. The Lapras move pool is really, really offensively more interesting than Wall Reigns, but Wall Reigns move pool is more defensively interesting than Lapras. It all boils down to which move pool is the relevant one. And for me, it's a really, really simple decision, and probably really, really obvious for most people here why I will judge in this Pokemon's favor. But if you're a slow Pokemon and can learn Ice Shot, you are a given winner in my book. I'm sorry to say it, for me, Lapras is overall the better between these two, and it has a lot to do with what Lapras can do. Wolverine does have, of course, a defensive set that are relevant, that can be capitalized on, but Lapras can do a lot more, and that has to be worth something. Of course, together with, of course, Free Strike, making it able to hit a lot of things naturally and doesn't have to be more specific with his move pool, such a warrior is forced to be. Lapras just defensively and offensively becomes a lot scarier than actually Wolverine. And it should be said, it has a better ability. Water Absorb definitely does help it quite a lot, and Dragon Dance makes it even more initiated than it needs to be. Which, of course, makes Lapras, while not as offensively scary as other Dragon Dancer, it makes it more unique and definitely more interesting. It does damage these both Pokemon that it can't Skullburn anything. Definitely Wolverine, since, of course, defensively being able to be, of course, stallier with a kid with Skull would probably work more in its favor, which, of course, it can't do. And I do believe that's holding it back quite a lot. Lapras, while it doesn't get it, it still isn't, of course, defensively destroying Lapras in that fashion. It should definitely be said though, I went into this episode definitely gonna give Lapras the win no matter what, but Walrein did surprise me. Walrein has a lot of things that I do believe can throw people off. The super fan combination with Toxic is definitely one of those. And as stated, defensively this Typhoon is very 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 bad, but they're bulky enough to take hits and that has to be capitalized on something. And now with of course C moves, but of course you're able to recover yourself with Stockpile, Walrein does have a strong niche that I definitely can see working in the long run. Lapras might be the easier one between these two to actually be capitalized on. It doesn't mean Wolverine is any 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 worse, to be completely honest. But yeah, overall, Lapras in my book is overall stronger. I would prefer using Lapras if I were given, of course, a choice. So thank you for watching, guys. What do you guys think? Which Pokemon do you think is better? And of course, tune in to next week where we will look at these guys.